This video is sponsored by Kiwico. More about them later. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you haven't guessed it by the name on all these boxes and by the title of this video, all of this is my new CNC machine. Now, more specifically, all of these parts are gonna turn into a Pro Series CNC machine from Avid CNC. And when all this is put together, the machine is gonna be four by three foot big. That means I can cut the full width of a sheet of plywood and three feet deep. And to do all of that cutting, you've got the thing that's inside of this box. <laughs> which is the 8.7 horsepower spindle, which is just super cool. Now you might ask yourself, where are you gonna put a four by three foot CNC machine? Well, it just so happens that I've saved a spot for that machine right here. To be honest, this is about the only spot that I've got left in my whole workshop where I can fit a machine that size. And yes, in case you're wondering, I am gonna keep my couch. I think that's gonna be a perfect spot to sit and chill while the machine does its thing. But hey, what are we waiting for? Let's start assembling this machine. That's the leg structure assembled, and we can sort of start to get an idea of how big this thing is gonna be. Pretty big, at least, considering the size of my shop. Now, full disclosure though, Abbey TNC sent me this entire machine free of charge. I did not pay any money for this. However, they didn't pay me any money for this. They didn't give me any talking points or requirements for this video or any future videos. All they wanted to do is send me a machine that I can have here in my shop and use for my future videos, which I greatly appreciate. I'm super happy to start using the machine and I already have a ton of really cool projects planned. Now, this is by no means gonna be an assembly instruction how to put together one of these machines. There's already a ton of really great videos out there that show you exactly how to put together one of these machines from start to finish. I'm just gonna give you the big picture, sort of the main steps of what goes into putting a machine like this together. And maybe I'll show you some cool bits and pieces that I find along the assembly process. Just like these little attachment mechanisms that had their company logo cast into them, which are used to assemble so far all the parts together. And as you can see, most of the main structure of this thing is gonna be put together out of this 8020 aluminum extrusion, which is super sturdy and really flexible. That's why you can get these machines in a bunch of different sizes. It's already a pretty stable frame. Right, next step, I think is gonna be attaching a whole bunch of these corner braces. So these things will obviously go on like this and they get installed with a couple of bolts into these T-nuts. Now, I first thought that I messed up and forgotten to insert these T-nuts ahead of time, but it turns out these things are really cool. They have this cool geometry that allows you to insert them in any place you want. And then they have this ball detent that allows you to position them in any position, so it's super easy to screw everything together. It's pretty neat, never seen these before. All right, the first slidey bits are in. I made sure to install both the linear rails here as well as those geared tracks in the bottom here properly, just like the instructions say you should. I've also just greased up these guys, which I made a little bit of a mess of myself. So good thing that the next step is to cover these things up with some dust cover so I don't have to touch them and get more greasy. Now that these end pieces are installed, it's time to start on the big moving pieces that are gonna make up the gantry. Oh, and by the way, before I started installing all these bits, I made sure that the whole frame was square. And although it's not currently in its final position, I also leveled it just so that I don't install anything really crooked. My God, this is a solid piece of aluminum. Guys, look at this, that's already the gantry, mostly assembled. So I've just been following along to the build instruction I have on the computer here. They have a step-by-step -step guide to basically every single step. Everything's going really well so far. 
except for one thing. After installing these linear bearings here, I went to grease them and this time, well, let's just say that me and that grease gun are not the best of friends. I'm not sure I did this right. But I got some grease on there, everything is looking good. The next step is gonna be the motors. So the motors for this thing are gonna be these NEMA 34s. I've already assembled them into these drive mechanism thingies. I got three of these in total. Two of them are gonna sit on either side of the gantry and the last one I think is gonna sit on top of there. So let's get to it. <laughs> And now that I've installed the cable tracks for all three axes, we are ready to start installing the cables that are gonna go inside of those tracks. Now I've got in total four motor cables because there's gonna be four motors. There's also four sensors, which I've already installed. So I have four sensor cables that are also gonna go inside of those tracks. Also, now that I'm sort of mostly done with all the big mechanical parts of the machine, but I just wanna say credit where credit is due. This whole machine is basically built on a metric system. So there's metric fasteners, metric dimensions. Yes! <laughs> right, let's do these cables. But first, a quick ad from today's sponsor, Kiviko. Kiviko creates super fun, hands-on projects and toys designed to expose kids in concepts in STEM in a fun and engaging way. They offer eight different subscription lines, each catering to a different age group and topic. Every box comes with everything you need for that month's project, so you never have to worry about not having the right tools or running out of supplies. Kiviko believes that small lessons today can mean big, world-judging ideas tomorrow. And sometimes when you're small, it's much easier to think big. Now that it's summer and the kids are off from school, a Kiviko credit subscription is the perfect substitute for screen time and to keep your kids' minds engaged. Now they actually sent me a couple of their crates to try out. And in this one, I built a pair of headphones. The kit came with everything included to put these together, including the parts for the frame, which are injection molded and laser cut, the speakers, all the electronics, and a really great step-by-step -step instruction on how to put them together and how they work. And you know what? They do actually work. Now, if you use the link in my description or go to kibico.com slash Alexander Chappelle, you get 50% off your first month of any crate. <laughs> Guys, tell you what, wire management, even though everything was pretty clear and fairly straightforward, just takes forever. I spent most of the day doing this stuff, but now all the wires are completely tucked away and Everything is hooked up and I cannot tell you how happy I am that this stuff just comes with two complete boxes full of all the electronics that need to be hooked up. Because let's be honest, I have no idea what's going on inside of here. So I'm just gonna neatly close these two and we're on to the very last piece, which is gonna be this monster of 8.7 horsepower spindle. I wonder, you think this would make a good go-kart motor? <laughs> so I'll just install this thing right here. There's a bunch of adjustability on this thing as well, but we'll have to do that once we get everything up and running. I'll hook up the cable and <laughs> we're done. Oh, hold on, there's one more. One more thing. And just like that, now we're finished. You know what? Next is a scary step, trying to hook it up to power and see if we can move this thing around. Okay, I think I've got everything connected. Oh God. <laughs> So it's supposed to be homing now. I hope it does. Was that it? <laughs> How cool is that? Right, so what I haven't tried yet is the spindle because it needs this big ass plug. I don't have any collets in here now, so that should be safe. Everything is plugged in. I should be able to activate the spindle. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> right, so before we can start cutting out pieces on the machine, we need some sort of work surface that we can attach pieces to. And that's why I got these two sheets of 19 mil MDF here. These two are gonna make up what is gonna become the work surface. And since this machine is capable of cutting slightly wider than the standard width of a sheet of plywood or MDF, I've cut these the long way. So that once everything is installed, I'll be able to support a full width of a sheet and then some. Now. I want this to be as thick as possible. That's why I've got two 19 mil sheets. I'm actually gonna try and glue these things together to knit these two 19 mil sheets into one really thick 38 mil sheet 
That way, once the top surface gets worn down from all the cutting, I can just resurface it and I don't need to replace this as often. So I've got a bunch of glue and I'm gonna try my best to laminate these two pieces of MDF together into one really thick one. Here goes nothing. Wah. Yeah. <laughs> right, that was only slightly stressful. This machine finally looks like it's ready for some use. After glue had dried on my MDF, I cut it to size. I actually cut it slightly larger than the working area of the machine. That way I could have it extend a little bit further out towards the front of the machine, but also overlap the sides a little bit. That meant that I had to cut a little recess with my handheld router, which created a ton of dust. I'm not sure how useful this will be yet, but at least now I have a big flat surface that I can work with. And the way I attached this whole thing to the machine was with some strips of plywood that I screwed into the aluminum extrusions underneath here. That meant that I could use the regular wood screws that I just countersunk really deep into the sheet itself and screw it right into those plywood pieces. That way, the screws are nicely tucked away and I can resurface this a bunch of times. Now, naturally, one of the first things you would do with the CNC machine like this after installing a table like this is to surface the whole table to make sure it's flat. Only problem with that is that would create a ton of dust and I don't have any dust collection set up yet. I actually want to design my own dust true and dust collection system that I think is going to be really cool, but that will have to be a future video. But that is not to say that I haven't already started on the dust collection. You might remember that pipe up there from the beginning of the video. Let me show you what I've got so far. So for those of you who have been watching this channel here for a while, you might remember that I built a massive dust collection system that is outside on the parking lot. Now I conveniently had an extra port ready to go on the duct system so all I had to do was duct the rest of the run. And then right before the ducting goes in through the wall to my side, I added in that square box, which is basically just a muffler, in the hope that the sound doesn't travel from this workshop through the piping and into my side. And for that same reason, I have that wooden box around the last 90 degree bend, and I just fill that whole thing with some insulating foam in the hopes that that will also dampen the sound a little bit. Well, all right, so that's all I got. That means no dust collection, but, I mean, we can't let that stop us. We still have to make something. I really want to use the machine. So I was trying to think of something cool that we can make that is relatively simple and a good first project for this machine. That got me thinking back to one of the very first projects I did on the CNC machine, which was a big wine cooling room for a restaurant. <laughs> now relax, we're not going to make anything remotely that big. But I still have those files, so I decided to modify those a little bit to make a little wall hanging wine holder that will be able to hold six bottles of wine. I've loaded everything up in the machine, so let's see if we can't make our first project. All right, you guys ready? <laughs> I think I am. I've loaded up the tool, I've also seared the tool, I've created some tool paths. By the way, huge thanks to Vectric for hooking me up with their Aspire software. That's the same software I've used in the past to create tool paths for other machines. So all that was super straightforward. So now the last thing is to see if I did it right. <laughs> and now here comes the beauty of having a table that you can screw it into. I can just attach my board straight to it. Now I'm gonna do the same way that I'm used to. So the very first tool path that I created, I'll just spot drill a couple of locations where it's safe to put in screws. I'm gonna stop the program, put in screws, and then I can run the whole thing without worrying about hitting those screws later on. Ah! <laughs> Good thing I didn't make a mess. Oh my god. This machine is crazy. It just eats through this stuff like it's butter. Mind you, this is 19 mil Baltic birch plywood. And I mean, it's pretty hard stuff. Now, yes, I definitely did make a huge mess, but we'll fix that in an upcoming video where I'll make the dust boot and everything. All right, now might not look like much yet. I still need to remove all the parts. There's some tabs that hold everything together. I'll also need to cut some more parts out of some thinner material. So I'll do that real quick and then I'll show you how all this goes together. All right, so let's see if we can manage to turn these bits into something. These bits are what came out of the other sheet that I cut. I managed to squeeze every last bit of space out of that sheet. So here's how this is gonna work. 
these two bits go in together like this. And then just like in the big wine cellar that I made, this bit will go in like this. Huh? You see where this is going? And then bottle of wine. <laughs> and the idea is the angle is such that the air bubble stays on top of here so that the cork stays wet and you can store these for a long time. Now because the wine bottles can stick out the back a little bit, I made a bunch more of these pieces. All of these are basically just to give the top of the wine bottle a little bit more space in against the wall. Now I've already cheated a little bit and assembled this ahead of time once. So I've already got the pre-drilled holes for the screws. And that way four pieces turn into one really thick and large one. All right, let's mount it on the wall. So I couldn't really come up with a good place to put this thing. So why not install it on the side of my laser cutter thingy? So in the last layer, there's some keyholes, which hopefully if I did this right, should line up like this. And then all these will just snap in. All right, let's fill this with some wine. And in case you're wondering, no, I don't usually have a bunch of bottles of wine in my workshop. I brought these from home to try this out. Hey! <laughs> I mean, for this size, it is maybe a little bit big and bulky since it originally was designed to be a full wall. But considering it was just like a little test project to see what my CNC can do, quite like it. <laughs> and in case some of you want to make one of these as well, I'll have the files available to download from my website, which is alch.shop. <laughs> All right, that was a really fun build. I'm super happy with the machine. Thank you so much, Avid, for sending me this thing. I'm sure I gotta have a ton of fun with it in the future. But that will be for this video. If you enjoyed watching, make sure to hit that like button. Also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out any of my future videos. My next one will be making a dust collection system. I really need it. And maybe a bunch of other cool things for this CNC machine. So see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. I feel like I have to vacuum my whole workshop now. <laughs>